Look at me on somebody else's YouTube channel. <laughs> Greg Benz. Um, a few weeks ago, Greg put up a uh, cracking little video which um, basically shows you a key use for what's known as the median stack mode in Photoshop. And uh, mm, it's a cracking video, and I recommend everybody goes and watches it. But I'm going to show you what I consider to be the primary use for the median stack mode. Um, basically, because Greg's used it here to remove tourists. Yeah, Greg's a nice person. Yeah, Greg gets on well with people. Yeah, I tend not to take photographs of people because I don't like people, and as far as I'm concerned, the easiest way to remove tourists is with a gun. But, well, I shouldn't say things like that, should I? I'm a naughty boy, not known for my level of political correctness. But, uh, anyway, go and watch this, because it illustrates a major point about the median stack mode in Photoshop. And uh, what you'll see Greg do here is a trick we've been doing for donkey's years. And, um, but it will come as a revelation to an awful lot of people, I just know it will. But what I'm going to show you is another use for the median stack mode. Uh, what I consider to be its main use, which is whew, contextually completely different. But technically, it's pretty much the same. So, anyway, I'm going to say ta to Greg now. See you, mate. Tiru. Uh, quit Firefox. And um, where are we? Whoop -a -doop -a -doo. We're going to come back into Lightroom, into the grid view. I nearly got myself lost then. And uh, here we can see I've got um, a dozen shots of my rather grotty office, or one corner of my rather grotty office. And. Uh, this sequence of images flagged up in red was shot at 12,800 ISO. Yeah, shocking! On a D800E. And uh, it's a lie actually because 12,800 ISO is actually H1.0 on uh, the D800E and on the D800. Um, it's H1 or H1.0 is a sort of amplified version of uh, 6400 ISO which is it which is the camera's highest native ISO and um, uh, D810 D810A God D810A Ooh, what a camera uh, limited use mine but well either of those two uh, marks of the D810 do have 12800 ISO as a native ISO option and um, so they'll deal fair even better at this exercise but um, just to um, um, look in comparison um, at 12,800 ISO H1.0 and 6,400 ISO native you can see there's a massive massive difference in the amount of noise we've got I just want to concentrate on this uh, particular framed Kennel Club certificate and uh, more importantly this red Kennel Club seal here and uh, if you're wondering who Kennel Stan Clipper is you can see this is it was mine and my wife's dog uh, until he died poor old Sam I'll get all teary in a minute well there he is good old boy uh, knew more about life than I ever did I can tell you but um, anyway, get over to this uh, shot here and we'll flick back to the um, crazy ISO version. And uh, here's the funny thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll through these images. Now, bear in mind the camera was locked off on a tripod and um, so it's gone nowhere. It's not moved anywhere. So all the static objects in the frame stay exactly where they are okay but if we just look at that red um, kennel club stamp you can see there's absolutely no definition in it at all we can see that there's some writing there some embossed writing but we just cannot decipher it at all but as we cycle through these images one at a time 
Oops, that's just, I don't know why that one keeps moving, but well, there you go. It's just I've got my preview set up wrong. But as you can see, the noise behaves a bit like the tourists did in uh, Greg's image, oh, in Greg's video. Um, the tourists moved, uh, the noise is moving relative to the fixed object in the frame. And that is the thing stuff in inverted commas that moves that is not common between the majority of frames gets replaced when we use the median stack mode in Photoshop so I suppose what I'd better do is give you a proper demonstration of this and this is probably going to take a while uh, because I'll use all six images Ordinarily, I wouldn't do this, and um, I could actually take them straight into Photoshop now as a smart object. But if we'd shot this sequence handheld, yeah, and um, the camera position might have changed slightly um, in between frames, so the static objects in each frame would be in different positions within the frame. So what we'd have to do is we'd have to do an al frame alignment first. And also if we use this technique um, um, to reduce noise in a nighttime sky, because we've shot it at a high ISO, because we're shooting it properly, and we need to use a very, very, very short shutter speed. And uh, so we, uh, wide field astrophotography. Um, straight away all your images fall into the super high ISO bracket uh, just by the nature of the technique you use to uh, actually do wide field astro work but anyway stop waffling um, the reason I'm not taking them straight into Photoshop as a smart object if I right click here and go edit in you can see I've got the option to take them in as a smart object straight away. I don't want to do that. What I want to do is, even though it's not going to make any difference to this particular image sequence, I'm going to show you the proper workflow um, for all eventualities. We need to open as layers in Photoshop and then d get Photoshop to align the layers. So we'll click open as layers in Photoshop and uh, this might take a moment or two so talk amongst yourselves and i'll be back very soon okay so there we go one two three four five six all six images open in separate layers in one document inside of photoshop right now then first thing we need to do with the top layer selected hold down the shift key and shift click on the bottom layer so that they all turn blue in other words they're all selected so all our layers are selected now as I keep stressing to you it's not going to make any difference you're not going to see any changes at all occur on this next step but we're just going through the motions and we will go edit auto align layers and the usual thing is just leave it in projection auto vignette removal and geometric distortion unticked and click OK and uh, this shouldn't take any time at all and um, if we were actually doing a, um, a um, wide field astro shot um, we would actually have to apply a mask to each one of these layers to uh, cover up the um, static part of each shot which would, which would be um, the earth, the ground, the mountains, the little building or whatever you're shooting the Milky Way right behind uh, because that obviously doesn't move and if you don't mask it out um, your images will get rather messy you'll end up with perfectly aligned stars and buildings that look like a horrible splodge but anyway never mind um, Mac users such as myself uh, we are we are a gifted bunch of people, you know, and uh, <laughs> the world rewards Mac users, and uh, a certain Mr. Hill from the US uh, came up with a, a, a Mac application called Starry Landscape Stacker, which does all that nasty masking and heavy lifting and smart object and median stack mode changes. Does all the heavy lifting for you. So, um, 
go out and buy a Mac. <laughs> anyway, okay. So now we've got all the um, images, all, all the layers aligned. Um, the next time-consuming thing we've got to do is with again with all the layers selected, I just right-click on the uh, layer stack and go convert to smart object. And uh, this is the thing that will take the greatest majority of time. So again, folks, talk amongst yourselves, and I'll be back in a moment or two or a birthday or two, depending on how fast my machine decides to work. Okay, so there we go, three birthdays later, and uh, we're all done and dusted. And uh, what are we gonna do now? I think we'll go and double click on the magnifying tool, and uh, go and scan through the image. This is exactly as we looked in, um, as, as the images looked inside of Lightroom isn't it noisy and quite mm, yucky to be quite honest with you Ooh, big shadow down there so anyway what we're now going to do is perform a little bit of magic because we're going to come to a uh, layer and we're going to come down to smart objects and we're going to come all the way down to stack mode and we are going to select the median stack mode and uh, we'll get a progress bar come up in a moment and uh, the whole process will take but a, 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 a slight moment and uh, it will creep up on us all of a sudden and uh, I think you'll be quite pleasantly surprised as to what happens next are you all excited? The tension is palpable, isn't it? Don't you think? Mm. Come along. Come along, machine. Do you think I ought to put some more RAM in the machine? <laughs> I suppose I should do, really. But it's so expensive. Oh. Come along. There we go. Told you it was worth waiting for. Mm. How's that? And now, Luke, funnily, we can actually read the Carol Club, founded, well, can we still read that date? Possibly not, but it's looking a heck of a sight more like 1873 than it did do, if I step back one, um, <laughs> like that. So, basically, going from a normal stack mode to a median stack mode, gives the impression of increasing resolution but it's not increasing resolution all it's doing it's removing this veil of moving noise so that with well, it's sort of over our image so that we can actually see the actual true resolution of the image so in other words we get rid of noise so there you go noise reduction at h1 on a D800E, so it would work just the same on a D800, it would work just the same on anybody else's camera. It doesn't matter whether it's a Canon or a Nikon. And uh, basically, to me, this is the singularly most powerful use of the median stack mode in Photoshop. Getting rid of noise without noise reduction, because as we all know, noise reduction kills detail median stack mode noise reduction actually seems to improve it how's that for a nice pleasant surprise for everybody now you're all going to go out and shoot at half a million iso for the rest of your lives aren't you <laughs> okay well i hope you enjoyed that little demo folks and uh, i'll see you very soon Toodaloo.